The subject is education and learning crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic struck at a time when the world was already facing a multiple crisis from climate change to growing inequality and political instability. All these issues are of great importance, particularly for the young and the underprivileged who have borne the brunt of the destruction, putting their future on hold to keep the trail and vulnerable safe. It is important to fully harness our global youth energy, enthusiasm, and knowledge so that we can together transform Africa into a continent, uh, a vibrant continent, more resilient, more equitable, more sustainable, and more self-reliant. Therefore, I'm happy to be with you today and to hear your views on education and learning crisis. The positive lessons from the continent of Africa from COVID. Um, and for me, the first is how important investments in local health workers and in governance rooted in communities has been. And I think that's got ramifications for education. That it's countries that have invested in local health capacity that, that have the longest lasting capacity to deal with pandemics. And I think that there's crossover lessons for education. You know, girls um, are important uh, for the continent, uh, for Africa, and, and um, COVID-19 has impacted, um, that's what the, the, the data says, girls um, much more in terms of, you know, uh, dropping out of school, um, in terms of, you know, maybe um, that they won't be coming back to school because of, of pregnancy. COVID has taught me that it's important to continue reskilling. And as Aisha said, being a consummate learner because things are changing. And I think it's key that we, when we look at education, we really look to see how we can equip the vast majority of our young population that are not able to get formal education. Most people after secondary school education, they don't transition to tertiary institution, just like it was the case in Tanzania. And so since the transition to work, it's important we focus on the curriculum generally, you know, teaching them soft skills, vocational skills, and reimagining the, the curriculum for those in secondary schools so that we can have people who, are, who have the skills to work. And from there, even when they transition to the university, they are better prepared for the rigors of university education and building their career from, from there. Um, now more than ever, we um, in our educational systems, like we um, do not only have to um, be looking at um, enrollment and looking at inequality or um, um, educating our youthful population or our young population taking children into consideration based on their level to say um, um, young people the age um, five years to seven years have to be in class two or this or that. But actually we have to start focusing on the needs of this young people. Now more than ever, we're seeing the importance of technology and how wide this digital divide really is. I feel like the pandemic has really exposed this crack, especially in Africa. I mean, if we look at even the statistics, out of the global 463 million school children, um, about 120 million children are on the African continent who are not able to actually um, access um, remote learning or have very lack um, or lack um, household assets. When we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about phones, we're talking about um, laptops, we're talking about any other technology that can actually allow them to even participate in the education system. It's important for youth to play an important role in um, the education system. And there's a lot that the, the youth are actually doing. I do know somebody who's um, started a school and I think the first class graduated last year, grade 12 class. And he's, he's incorporated things like innovation and leadership in the curriculum, which I think is quite interesting. And I'm eager to catch up with him and just hear about everything that's going on and the results of the students and how the school is going. Um, others have added uh, arts, African skills. Uh, first of all, a government that does not have a policy, an education policy, will not go anywhere. And in that policy, you have to make sure that uh, 
It has to respond, respond to the needs of the learners from primary to secondary, to higher education, to technical and vocational. The British Foreign Office um, underscored that it's committed to sending 40 million girls from low and middle income countries to school within the next five years. And the G7 ministers committed to $15 billion over the next two years to help women in developing countries. So question one is, are any of you going to be involved in holding them to account? Leaders create an education system and an education system creates leaders and it is a reciprocal uh, system. We cannot say that we, we, we are expecting to have leaders when you don't have a good education system because that's where leaders will be created.